Look at that drag- Hi, and welcome to my fun and profitable skilling guide. This guide will be covering crafting. All of the methods for training crafting or ways to make money with crafting that I will be covering inside of this video will be listed here, so if there is a particular one you would prefer to see, just click it and it will take you to that part of the video. In this part of the video, we are going to learn how to make urns. Now per every one urn you want to make, you will need two soft clay. And depending on what type of urn you're going to make, you will need certain levels. You will need 61 crafting for strong woodcutting urns, 62 crafting for infernal urns, 76 crafting for decorated fishing urns, and 81 crafting for the best urns that give the most experience, which are decorated cooking urns. Before you decide which urn you want to make, you should figure out if you are doing this mostly for profit or doing this because this is the highest level thing you can do. If you are doing this because it's the highest level thing to do, I would suggest you just make the highest level urn that you can. But if you are doing it for profit, I would suggest you check the prices of four different urns, and whichever urn is the most expensive, that is the one you are going to want to make for the most profit. In order to remember the price that you bought all of these urns for, put them back into the GE at the same price you bought them for, minus one coin. So I bought this for 731 coins, I'm going to put it back in here for 730, so that way I can have like a visual representation of how much each of these urns cost. And wow! Wow! This one bought for a thousand and it's probably going to be the one I will be making. Now you are also going to need two soft clay for every urn that you do wish to make. I would suggest that you buy soft clay for the cheapest you can get it. To figure out how cheap you can get the soft clay for, put a ridiculously high offer in and buy one instantly. And keep a remembrance of this price, so 145 coins for one soft clay. Then you can sell it back into the GE for a really low price to figure out the price that you could buy it for. So this only has a price range of 145 to 142 coins. Now that's only a 3 coin difference which I don't think is a lot of money and really significant at all. So I would suggest just buying a bunch of them for 145 coins. Now earlier I didn't even check the prices of these so when you will see me making the urns and the location to do it I will be using cooking because these are urns that I will actually be using for myself and not selling for profit. This is the quickest way to make your urns. You want to be in the east bank of Varrock. If you have a beast of burden, I would suggest using it and having your quick option set to interact. The first thing you're going to do is withdraw soft clay, then while in the bank window, hit interact, then push 2 for store, put them in, put the soft clay inside of your beast of burden, close that window, Open back up your bank, get more soft clay, and then run south. Once you get down here, you're going to want to go into this building to craft. You want to click on the potter's wheel, click on urns, go all the way to the left to get to the cooking urn, and then all the way on the right to get to the decorated cooking urn. Once you have finished making all of your urns at the potter's wheel, you want to right click on your urn and click the option use, then use that on the pottery oven. You might think it would be faster if I could put the unfinished urns inside of my yak and grab out the other 28 soft clay I have, make those, and then fire all of them at once. But actually, unfortunately, you cannot put unfinished urns inside of a beast of burden. So unfortunately, you have to fire these 14 urns before you can make 14 more. Right before this is about done, get ready and click store on your beast of burden. As soon as that last XP drop hits, click store. Withdraw soft clay, put the 14 urns you just made in, withdraw 14 more soft clay, and then click on the potter's wheel again. You're just going to repeat the first step of annoyingly scrolling through these options to make more decorated urns. On the way back, you might be tempted to click that left bank window, but you're going to want to click the one on the right over here. The reason for this is so you can quickly deposit your items in your backpack into your bank, then deposit the items from your Beast of Burden into your bank, and repeat from the beginning. Here is the XP gained from my tests. With an inventory of 28 clay and 28 clay on my yak, it takes me about 3 minutes and 50 seconds to make 28 urns. I'm just going to say that's about 4 minutes. So that means I can do about 
15 runs per hour, which means every hour I can make 420 urns. So with me making 420 urns every hour, here's the XP gains that I was getting. Now, I can't necessarily show you profit because the price of the urns is always changing and even though some might have a lower level requirement, you can make more money with them. So it really just is up to how many you make and how much you're making per urn. But I can say that the urn prices do fluctuate kind of a bit and sometimes they jump between 400 coins all the way up to 1000 coins or even more. So this does have a potential to make you between like 67k and 320k per hour. In this part of the video, we are going to learn how to get some nice crafting and magic XP with the lunar spell Super Glass Make while also making a big chunk of profit every hour. The requirements to cast this spell are the quest Lunar Diplomacy. This will unlock the lunar spellbook. A magic level of 77, 2 astral runes, 10 air runes, a staff for fire runes, this is because the spell also requires 6 fire runes, but if you use a staff that takes fire runes for you, then you save 6 fire runes for every spell. You will also need some buckets of sand and some seaweed. These are the prices that I was buying all of my stuff for. So for the total cost of one inventory, it's 7,641 coins. So I'm going to take these out real quick. So this is exactly what you are going to be using every time you cast this spell. So as I cast this spell, I will be getting magic XP and crafting XP. And see how I did make some extra? On average, you will be making 17 molten glass even though you only have supplies for 13 molten glass. The total sell price for 17 molten glass was 10,676 coins. That's a whopping profit of 3,035 coins every time you cast this spell. You will also be gaining 78 magic XP and 130 crafting XP. When you make these, you're going to want to be at a bank that has a one-click bank option. That way you don't have to deal with right-clicking. You just want to have a bank that's easy to click on. For example, I'm using the bank in Burgundy Rot because I love this bank and no one's ever here. So I'm going to tack my time to see how long it takes me to make 500 of these. And I will be using that for my profit guide. <laughs> for the quickest method to bank, you notice how my hands bob up while I'm doing this spell? I have learned that the best time to click is when my hands bob up for the second time. Click. So look, I'm almost, wow, I, you do actually end up making a bunch of extra glass while doing this. I just am about to hit 500, which is what I bought supplies for and what I would have gotten if I did use these on a furnace to uh, make my glass. But I had supplies for an extra 123 by the time I passed the original 500. So I'm actually pretty stoked to see how many of these you could possibly make per hour took me a total time of 5 minutes and 4 seconds to do 500 of them. Here's the results I got from my test. It took me 5 minutes for 38 spells, so that's 456 spells per hour. I was making a profit of 3,035 coins every time I casted that spell. So that's a total profit of 1,383,960 coins per hour. That's awesome. Also, because you get 78 magic XP and 130 crafting XP, you will also be gaining 35,568 magic XP per hour and 59,280 crafting XP per hour. That's not bad. 60k crafting XP and making almost 1.4 mil? I think it's something you guys should consider. The following are required for potion flasks. The quest, as a first resort, 81 mining and 89 crafting. Also on the video right now, I have three different smaller videos. These were just me test running the three different main routes that I know people take to get here. The only difference between the three paths you can take to get here is that Charter Ships is about five seconds faster, <laughs> but besides that, they're all pretty much the exact same time. So just whatever route you prefer, take it. In order to make these potion flasks, you will have to mine red sandstone. 
Now this red sandstone is located along the north wall of Uglog. The red sandstone up and of itself is not tradable, but you can put them on a beast of burden. So I would suggest that if you can take a pack yak, please take one. This will reduce it so you only have to take one trip versus two trips in order to get the 50 red sandstone you can mine per day. If you have the aura resourceful, or if you have just mined a shooting star, you can have a possibility of getting over 50 red sandstone. After you have filled your inventory, either run around the wall and go into the main entrance, or you can take the agility shortcut through. This shortcut will require 29 agility. Once you are inside of Uglog, you want to locate the robust glass making machine. This will convert all of the red sandstone inside of your inventory into robust glass. Once converted, craft all of the robust glass into potion flasks. With my results, this will take you a time between 6 and 7 minutes every day, including travel, mining into red sandstone, converting into robust glass, and then crafting into potion flask, granting you 70 mining XP per red sandstone, 100 crafting XP per potion flask, and 4,000 coins every potion flask, gaining 3,500 mining XP per day, 5,000 crafting XP per day, and around 200,000 coins. In this part of the video, we will be learning how to make big profits crafting polypore armor. On screen, I have the level requirements for each piece of all three sets of polypore armor. These levels can range between level 3 to level 98 crafting in order to make. Crafting polypore armor is different from crafting dragonhide armor in respect to how many flakes each part will use per set. To craft polypore armor, you will have to use flakes of the respected armor type you wish to make on mycelium web parts while having thread in your inventory and a needle in your tool belt. The mycelium web parts can be purchased from the Grand Exchange or you can purchase them from a merchant who is located at the entrance of the polypore dungeon for about a tenth of the price. For simplification, I will only be making ganodermic armor, but the concept remains the same for fungal and graphulic. Now you want to ensure that you are going to be making the best profit you can, so you will have to test buy a few things and remember these prices. Start by buying one flake instantly and then putting it back in the GE for one coin. Whatever price that the flake sells for, you want to buy 27,999 flakes for that price plus one coin. This is the cheapest price that you can get your flakes for. And the reason why you are buying 27,999 flakes is because the limit on buying flakes is 28,000 every 4 hours. Next, buy visor, top, and legs instantly, then put them back into the GE for the price that you got them for, minus 1 coin. This is the best price you can sell your armor for. Now that you know your prices, you want to figure out which piece will earn you the most profit when making. To do this, take your flake price and multiply it by the flake amount needed to make that piece of armor. This will give you the cost to make. Next, take your sell price and subtract the cost to make. This will give you your profit for one piece. Then, take your profit per one piece and divide it by your flake amount required to make that piece. This will give you your profit per flake. You want to make whichever item will give you the most profit per flake. The only downside of this is that with one short of 18,000 flakes, you can make 5 tops with one short of 3,000 extra flakes, 18 legs with one short of 1,000 extra flakes, or 55 visors with one short of 500 flakes. The 5 tops will sell for a lot faster than 55 visors, but if you have the patience and the visors are going to make you more profit, I would suggest that you just make those and wait for them to slowly sell. Now I can't give you definitive results on how much money you can make because not only will you not always make money, but prices are always changing. But I can say that per every flake you use, you will be getting 0.2 crafting XP. So with 27,999 flakes, that's a possibility of 5,599.8 XP every 4 hours. In this part of the video, we are going to be learning how to make a nice big profit every 4 hours making Furies. The requirements to make Amulets of Fury are 90 crafting, gold bars, balls of wool, 
87 magic or enchant onyx tabs and it is suggested that you have a large cash pile. Now when you are making furies, you're going to want to buy and sell a few things to figure out how much profit you can make. Just as a pre-warning, finding out the prices of onyxes can sometimes make you lose a lot of money. First buy an amulet of fury instantly, then sell it back for that price minus one coin. This will be the price that you will be selling all of your furies for. Next, you want to buy an onyx and an uncut onyx instantly, then sell them back to the grand exchange. Now when you do this, you can lose a bunch of money, so it is suggested that if you will be doing this more than once, saving one uncut onyx and one regular onyx so you can test the prices with every time. The buy limit on onyxes is 100 every 4 hours. Once you have your onyx, you are going to want to go to a furnace and bring a gold bar with you per every onyx you are taking. Use your gold bar on the furnace to open up the option of what to craft. You only want to craft the amulet. Do not craft anything else. You could lose money, except for rings, but I'm not going to go there. Once you have made your unstrung amulet, use the ball of wool on the amulet, and this will give you an onyx amulet. Once your amulet has been created, you can cast level 6 enchant on it if you have a lava battle staff and a cosmic rune. Or, if you do not have 87 magic, you can use an enchant onyx tab on the onyx amulet to turn it into a fury. Once your fury has been made, you just sell it back at the price you bought the original fury for, minus one coin. Now, profit margins with this can be very scary. You can go from not making any money to making 500k of Fury. It all really just depends. Now, there is a little short story I would like to talk about real quick if you'd like to hear. Um, I'm going to have to dig up these screenshots, so they might not be... Yeah. Um, back when the first bot nuke had happened and the announcement hit, there were a lot of bots in Tazahar that were collecting Tokul. With the Tokul they collected, they were buying Onyxes. This was before the kiln, so this really helped crash the price of Onyx. Luckily, I was on right when the announcement hit, and Furies all of a sudden got bought out to about 10 mil, but the Onyx was still in the GE for really, really cheap. So within like 20 minutes, I made 200 mil buying a bunch of Onyxes and converting them into Furies. So with crafting, you can have a possibility of insanely high margins on Furies, but I don't know if you'll get more than 100k nowadays, but all I can say is good luck. Wow, um, there were so many other things that I did want to talk about with this guide, but I just didn't have time and I didn't want to make this video longer than 20 minutes. I mean, my smithing one was longer than 20 minutes. Um, if you guys thought this guide was useful, if you liked it, if you found anything in there you're going to use, just leave me a comment let me know. You know, I love the feedback. If there's another guide that you would prefer me do next, you know, leave a comment. I'll bump it to the top of my list. Um, this is the second profitable skilling guide I've made. I'm planning on making one for every skill. So I will leave an annotation right in the dead center of this picture. That annotation can take you to the main video where I will link you to a guide that I will be making for every single skill. If you guys did like this guide and would like to know when I post more videos on profitable skilling, if you subscribe, as soon as I post that video, you'll be able to see. I'd also like to thank you guys for watching my video and have a great day. Go make some money skilling.